I first noticed that each of them were one away from being a whole. So 10 is one away from 11, 11 is one away from 12. 11s are also, they're bigger than 12s, which is good to know. So in my mind, I see the same holes, but partitioned differently. And they're both one away from being full. So all this is shaded in. Since 12s are smaller than 11s, this piece is smaller than that. And so it's closer to being a whole. Initially, I identified all of this in my mind, but then got caught on the fact that 11ths are bigger and just decided that this was a bigger fraction. So I have 10 11ths and 11ths are bigger than 12ths and miss the point that the 12s actually make, or since they're smaller, are closer to being a whole. Um, when prompted to think of a different example, I immediately thought, okay, um, two thirds and three fourths, you know, I just try to pick the smallest numbers that are you know, difference of one between, you know, to match this dynamic. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I re immediately could picture in my mind, I have a better, a mental image of what two thirds looks like just in my mind and three fourths. And so once I realized that and that fourths are smaller, I thought of the, you know, the circles. So when I pictured that, it just clicked automatically to me. Oh wait, the fact that the pieces are smaller means more of this is filled in than this one. A third is left over here, where only a fourth is left over here. And that's how I was able to link it up here, that that one's greater. Okay, I wanted to illustrate it with a better visual this concept that the complement part, complement piece, which is this right here, the missing piece to make a fraction whole. As the denominator increases and the parts get smaller, that complement piece also is getting smaller and the fraction is becoming closer and closer to being a whole than it was in the previous fraction.